Hello everybody, my name is Patrick and I work with geopolymers and I thought about telling you guys what a geopolymer is. Well, there are different ways to put them, but one particular good is to say a geopolymer is an environmentally friendly cement. So why then is it environmentally friendly? Well, that is because normal cement, normal cement is called Portland cement, is very bad for the environment. Why is that? Yeah, because um, you really need high temperatures to make it um, and there is no way to make it at lower temperatures. And though the other day I made a post in which I posted the phase diagram of this system that is the system of uh, SiO2 and CaO to put it um, chemically. And in this phase diagram, you can see the very um, synthetic mineral we want to have when we make Portland cement uh, is 3CaO and 1SiO2, I believe. I just forgot, but I know on which place in the phase diagram it is. I put it in the show notes down um, in the end. Uh, well, this particular uh, synthetic mineral, it's called alite, um, can only be made at temperatures higher than 1400 and exactly 20 degrees Celsius. And yeah, it is made in a huge furnace. It looks uh, amazing. It is a huge horizontal pipe and it turns and it's heated from above to about 1500 degrees because you need, uh, of course, higher temperatures uh, as, um, uh, as you need for the um, chemical reaction, for the uh, ceramical reaction, so to speak. And um, this 1500 degrees Celsius makes a lot of CO2, right? Because they burn like um, tires, uh, old tires, plastic, garbage, um, and that kind. And that makes only one part of all the CO2 that is emitted in this process. Well, two bigger parts, <laughs> two bigger parts, yeah, two bigger parts are from the raw material. Because um, I said you burn um, stuff to get 1,500 degrees from the, from the bottom, but from the top you put in the feedstock and the feedstock consists to 80% of lime. Yeah, what is lime? Yeah, sure, what, what should lime be? Well, lime is a stone that contains CO2 because that is clamshells and that kind, which took million years ago um, CO2 out of the environment, out of the atmosphere, and um, and and saved it and um, put it in the in the ground where it's where it was until <laughs> the Portland cement manufacturer came and digged it out. Yeah, so much to the um, Portland cement, which we don't like. And um, but the question was, what is a geopolymer? And a geopolymer is another kind of cement, and it's in some cases made from yes, no, yeah, similar um, or comparable uh, raw materials. So one kind of geopolymer, for instance, is made by uh, a calcine, so burnt clay. Um, you need to burn it at 750 degrees, which is almost half um, uh, as before, and uh, some water glass. Water glass is a uh, chemical. Um, in earlier days they made <coughs> pickled uh, eggs with them and you need to burn it at 1200 degrees. But a normal, uh, uh, um, quite recently I made a geopolymer with 80% uh, compressive strength and a fantastic <coughs> freeze thaw uh, resistance and it contained only uh, seven percent of metakaolin, this is this clay mineral, and um, three percent of solid water glass. Okay, so um, we take burnt clay, some water glass, and some lye, the same lye you need for pretzels. Then you mix it, and you have a slurry, 
and um, most of the times you mix in some stones and gravel and that kind um, because that is uh, relatively cheap the two pumps relatively expensive and um, the one time one part geopolymer and three to four parts of the uh, so-called aggregates and then normally 24 hours later um, it hardened into a geopolymer concrete and yeah concrete by the way is um, a cement a um, no, let me put it this way, um, is the sand and um, gravel, so-called aggregates, and they are glued together with a cement that can be Portland cement or, uh, uh, or as we do it, um, uh, um, geopolymer cement, and um, it is a composite material. And as you guys see, uh, for geopolymers, we need energy as well. But uh, for uh, normal Portland cement, you need like 1,500 degrees. Um, we need far less. And in some cases, we need very little because it can be made from uh, quite some, quite a number of um, secondary raw materials like ashes and uh, slugs. And, and a good geopolymer has um, a superior structure and that is because um, when you analyze it and you can analyze it with uh, some uh, weights yeah uh, with the nuclear magnetic resonance it can this kind of analysis can tell us that a geopolymer has the uh, chemical bond structure as normal glass and how uh, resistive glass is that i guess we all know this and um, it, uh, portland cement does not have this okay and um, you can look it up it is it has a um, period of usage i hope th hope this is the english term for it if not then you know you, you know the drill i write it down in the in the notes and um, so of only 50 years so they expect a, a building from portland cement for only 50 years i believe this is relatively little and so um, there are buildings in the world. They have some similarities to um, some of the port uh, some of the um, uh, geopolymers, like I proposed them, and that would be the, the Pantheon and the Colosseum in uh, ancient Rome. And in part, no, I believe the Pantheon still stands. Um, they resist the forces of nature since, yeah, thousands of years. Okay. Um, this is always when you read like the Romans had a um, superior cement. That's because you can, through nuclear magnetic resonance, um, tell that its structure is similar to that of geopolymer. Yeah. Um, on this uh, channel, you guys can find some more information about geopolymers. Uh, I've made a video and in which um, I show to you how to mix them and uh, more more videos like that uh, and I hope even shorter ones um, will follow and there are books of mine about geopolymers which you can buy on Amazon and yeah that was it for today I hope you guys liked it share comment and subscribe and have a good one. Bye-bye.